My name is Dr. Gloria Bled, and I'm a recent PhD graduate at Cornell University. And I figured after this five plus year journey that I could share 10 things you should know before you start your PhD at Cornell University. So I'm gonna move from backwards to the first. Being, I'm going to start with what I learned recently and what I learned way in the beginning. And so, to some context, I did an MSPhD program in the Department of Natural Resources. So I came in straight out of undergrad with research experience and also a publication. And so that's just some context for you. And of course, every department is different across universities, including the one that I'm in. And so my perspectives are based on the lens of someone that was in that particular department. So number 10, every department is different, as I mentioned earlier. And so you should know why you are doing your PhD. And this is, what I mean by this is, is your goal to f just get the doctor prefix? Is it to become a researcher? Is it to change the world or is it just because you have nothing else to do? And so figuring that out in the beginning will help you determine, I guess, what you'll put your effort into and what you won't and how quick you'd want your program to go or how long you want it to be. For me, it was credibility. I wanted the doctor in front of my name. I wanted to be an expert, so I did it for the prestige and the opportunity to learn more about my subject. And as a 5'2 black woman, you want some credibility in a space. And so having the doctor prefix will definitely give me some credibility. So that was my number 10. Number nine, you should know that your PhD experience might not qualify as real experience. <laughs> Uh, as I maneuver through this job market that is completely, I realized that a lot of employers, uh, they would like PhD to apply, but um, they're going to preference people that actually have work experience after their PhD, depending on where you're going. And so keep that in mind about what type of job they're looking for and what kind of experience they look for. That way you can plan what kind of side things you can do on the side to get that experience because they want the experts that have experience post-grad. Number eight, you should know that you cannot procrastinate writing your dissertation. And you're probably gonna ignore this because I ignored it as well. Write, 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 whenever you can. Write a little bit at a time because if you try to write a 300 page dissertation like I did in the past, what, two months, you will regret it. It'll get done, but you will regret it. Number seven, you, your values will not be reflected by your department. And this is from a black woman perspective. Uh, don't expect people that don't look like you to have your same values. And so if you recognize or observe that your department is not the most aware of how certain things are going to affect minorities, specifically black people and African people, well, more so sub-Saharan African people, you can speak up about it, but understand that their actions will be hidden behind theory because theoretically anyone can research anything, even the same things that led to horrible things in history. But you can speak up or you can just get in and get out <laughs> and go somewhere else or partner with an HBCU. That way you have some kind of other values coming in on the back end. Number six, track everything you do. As you conduct your research, as you write anything, track everything. I have two documents that I track both of my major methods in, and let me just say, when it comes time to the defense, it's good to have a record of what you did, what you changed, and what changed over time as you conducted your research. Keep that in mind. Number five, faculty projects are more respected than PhD projects. What I mean by that is, if you approach someone to partner with them as a PhD project, their eyes won't light up until you mention that, oh, it's actually a faculty-led project. I'm just supporting it in my PhD role. Now, in my position, my PhD led to a faculty-led project, and so there were some caveats there, but I recognize that people's eyes light up or people respect you more uh, or respect your project more or your research more when it's faculty-led. 
Number four, <laughs> living as a single person in the middle of a college town is not cheap. It's expensive. You will have to live paycheck to paycheck if you're on a stipend that pays you every two weeks. Or like me, I was on fellowship most of my time at Cornell. And so by the time December came, most of my money ran out. And I emphasize single because typically I was usually the only single person out of my group of folks that I would hang with. And the bills are different for someone that lives alone. And I prefer to live alone. I will not sacrifice my moment of silence to myself because of, you know, finances. And so keep in mind, financially, you will struggle. Uh, and so you have to lean on your parents, family, and friends to take care of you. Number three, your exams are like conversations. And again, this is different across departments. And I'm in a social sciences, mixed methods approach type work. And so your qualifying exam, your master's defense, your dissertation defense, if you know your stuff, it's just a conversation. You need to just automatically assume that you're going to pass because it's your work and you're the expert. So um, you are the master of the information. Just go in and converse. Number two, if you're doing a combined program like I did, MS, PhD, use your master's as a way to explore something that's very limited in scope. Whether it's a method or a particular literature review you want to conduct, I would recommend that you limit your scope to something that is doable within two years. I wanted to get out in five years and I got out in five and a half, but limit your master's to something that is not too ambitious whether it be a methodology paper or a literature review. That way, when you get to your PhD level work, you have something that's very concrete that can then help broaden the scope of your work. But I found that having an overly ambitious master's put me behind a bit in terms of finishing the PhD. And number one, you will succeed. You should know that you will succeed in your program. You, as long as you have the right passions and motivations or intentions behind doing a degree, you will succeed, automatically coming with the confidence. Imposter syndrome might take a while to go away, and it may never go away, but you have to know that you're coming in as your own expert and your own very, very specific <laughs> subtopic of, um, I guess, research. And so I can say that there is no need to worry. Um, I worry a lot, but I know my stuff. You know your stuff. And understand that in my experience, no one wanted me to fail. And the most critical part of my success at Cornell was my advisor. And my advisor was Dr. Shorna Alred. And once you and your advisor get along, everything is cruise control. And those are my 10 things. You belong, you'll do great. And what's next for me, I'm not too sure because I did research for the past five plus years, but I hope that this helped you because these are things that I think you should know before you start your PhD at Cornell or an HBCU. Thank you.